section of tonight, candidates forum, is very similar to the one for the board members, except each supervisor candidate will have an opportunity to extend their comments two times if they want to use the red card. Um, by straw, I have Mr. Van Leuven, you have the floor first for your opening comments. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for your patience uh, for staying this late into the night. Um, I want to be the 10th person to thank the Chamber, <laughs> the League of Women Voters, the Spotlight, and the Capital Area Council of Churches for bringing us together in what is really um, uh, one of your only opportunities to see us side by side answering the same set of questions and hopefully moving a bit beyond sound bites, although that's tough to do when you've only got uh, uh, one minute to answer questions on very complex issues. Um, uh, I also want to thank my wife, Isabel, who's in the second row beside Maureen. Uh, in January, we'll have been together for 32 years, and I still wake up thankful that uh, she chose me. Um, and my uh, three daughters, Katie, Emma, and Juliet, apologize for not being here tonight, but they had homework to do, and that took precedence. Um, I was born in Michigan. I grew up in Park City, Utah, where I watched a town transition from a mining town into a ski resort town. Then I came east for college. I, went, did, I did my undergraduate studies at Middlebury College, where I, did, um, uh, I have a degree in religion and also a self-designed degree in Arctic and Alpine ecology. And I have a master's degree from Tufts University in biology and urban and environmental policy. The majority of my career um, has been, was spent with the Nature Conservancy, where I oversaw complex budgets, managed staff, and guided programs to greater success of financial stability and political stability. In 2010, I launched my own environmental consulting firm, where I basically work with um, agencies and nonprofits to do this much work with this much money. And that's basically what the town supervisor does. It's a big job. The town supervisor oversees almost 220 staff and a $40 million budget and has to guide the town through complex issues with 34,000 bosses. So as you listen to us tonight, listen to our answers, but also look at our demeanor. Who's focused on solutions? Who's focused on complaining? Who will best represent the town? Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Fish, please. Thank you. I'm new to politics, so you're going to get a big dose of me for a couple minutes here so you get to know what I'm all about. I'd like to be the 11th person to thank <laughs> the League of Women Voters, Capital Area Council of Churches, Bethlehem Spotlight, and the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event. I'd like to thank all my fellow citizens also for coming and taking time out of your night to uh, be here. I'm proud to be sitting here before you as the Republican conservative and reform party nominee for the office of Bethlehem supervisor. I am a lifelong resident of Bethlehem. I grew up on a six acre horse farm in Slingerlands, uh, McCormick Road, now McCormick Road North. I come from a long line of public servants, from an uncle that served in the 1st Marine Division at Guadalcanal, another uncle that was a CB in the Pacific, and a father that was uh, in the uh, Navy as well. Uh, I mention those facts to you because history is very important to me. We live in a very beautiful town, a very historic town, and we need to preserve the town's unique suburban and rich history. The, the uh, greatest pleasure I've had is going out and meeting the citizens of this town. And uh, it's been an honor. Some of the questions that I've been asked. Once you're out of the heart of Bethlehem, they don't seem to care about us in the outlying areas. Is there anything you can do about that? The town is unresponsive to offers of assistance from citizens with expertise in a certain area. They don't receive calls back. Can you explain the 2% tax? I hope we can answer some of those tonight. Thank you. Thank you. OK, Mr. Fish, we're going to begin with you with the first question. And then Mr. Van Leuven will answer second. The first question is, 
there was tremendous tension between the town supervisor and the police department in the 2015 election. What will you do to reduce that tension? I'm a retired police officer. I've done the job for 24 years. So uh, I think I would be capable of uh, building a good relationship with the police department. I know what they need and they know that uh, I could provide them with what they need in terms of training or equipment through grants. There's many vehicles to uh, achieve what they need, and I could absolutely do it. Mr. Van Leuven, would you like to respond, please? When I, uh, one of the first things I started doing when I was elected onto the town board last year was uh, I started doing ride-alongs with our police department, and they were very generous with their time, and I think uh, over the last 20 months I've done almost 60 hours um, with the officers in the cars, in the squad room, getting an understanding of the challenges they face, um, most of which we in town have no idea about, and really getting to see the approach that our police officers take to law enforcement in our, com in, in our community, and learning and seeing that um, our police department engages in true community policing. Um, I, I think we're a model uh, for the town. Um, I've been working to rebuild bridges between the police department and the town board for the last 20 months. Um, and I think that we're making good ground on that because it's a relationship based on understanding and respect. Okay, thank you. The next question, Mr. Van Leuven, I'll begin with you, please. Would you support a townwide study of fire districts to investigate the potential for consolidation, increased efficiency, optimum use of volunteers, and a possible reduction in taxpayer burden? I think that that's, that's an issue that uh, the town board doesn't have any uh, oversight of. Uh, the fire districts are completely independent of the town, uh, town board, as is the, um, as is the school districts, um, as, is the, um, as is the library. Um, if the fire district commissioners felt that that was a priority, I would absolutely work with them uh, to do whatever I could in the role of the town to do that. Um, but that's a decision on, uh, that I, I don't have a lot of experience um, with the fire departments, um, and I'm not in a position to tell them what to do or how to do it. Um, what I can do, however, if they want, is work with them to identify what their goals are and help them identify the most effective ways of achieving them. Um, but I think we have to be respectful of uh, the different lines of elected government in town. Thank you. Um, yes. Studies and uh, improving services with the fire department is very important. I would support any and all uh, overtures from the fire department to reach out to uh, study response times, equipment needs, anything like Mr. Van Leuven says. We do have to take into consideration the autonomy of the uh, entity, but I would support anything in terms of ways to keep people safer and to save money as well. And Mr. Fish, this is for you the first one. Okay. Please address the, t oh, I'm sorry. Please address what the town might be able to do regarding opioid and other substance abuse problems in the community. Uh, I have a relative that recently uh, passed away from this issue, and it's a uh, very uh, near and dear to me. The first thing we need to do is admit there's a problem in this town. I don't know, and I don't know if people are willing to do that. There is a big problem. I have children that are younger. Uh, they see it. We need to reach out as a community to assist the people that need assistance offer the treatment and also offer some type of post-treatment counseling or whatever is needed to keep the people safe, safe from themselves. Mr. Van Leuven. I, I was actually uh, at, the, at, at Sheriff 
uh, County Sheriff Craig Apple's office today having a conversation on this very topic um, with uh, Judge Donovan and two other Bethlehem residents who have extensive experience on this issue. Um, and what we're looking to do is to identify real programs that we can undertake in town that will make a difference. I'm not interested in a bunch of big forms where we bring people together and talk a lot and come out at the end exactly where we went in, went in at the beginning. Um, we need to work with the school districts so that we can um, uh, educate and guide our, uh, our students away from drugs in the first place. We need to work with the Sheriff's Department SHARP program to help uh, uh, addicts who have been convicted uh, work their way through rehab and get out. We need to support the effort of our town uh, criminal court uh, to guide uh, uh, residents who uh, have been convicted into rehab programs. And, and, and Judge Donovan started this program because in 2016, eight defendants who came before him died. It's a real problem. We need to work on it together. Okay. And the next question, Mr. Van Leuven, I'm going to begin with you. Do you think climate change is something Bethlehem should worry about? I do. Um, I, 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 climate change was something that I focused on in one of my last positions with the Nature Conservancy where I brought together a wide range of interests in the Hudson Valley from CSX Railroad to farmers, wildlife advocates, farmers, highway, superintend highway superintendents, and um, emergency first responders to talk about how climate change is going to be affecting our communities. Um, I've been pushing our, our town uh, our department heads to think about climate change because we're gonna see more flooding on the Hudson. We need to make sure that our wastewater treatment plant can handle it. We're gonna see more heat waves. We need to make sure our emergency responders have, are in position to be able to help um, uh, seniors and other uh, residents at risk. It's a real issue. We can't pretend that it's not, and we need to take it seriously and move forward as a community. And Mr. Fish, could you respond to that? Climate change is a real thing, um, and I think that the town should look at the things Mr. Van Leuven uh, cited. Uh, we should look at it in a, uh, a mature way and not be, uh, I had an, this is a kind of an issue to, for me because I uh, spoke to a, a a uh, local publication, and I was kind of misquoted. I, uh, I referenced the 98% uh, um, statistic and my uh, disbelief in that specific statistic, and I was r roundly beat up for that. It is an issue. It needs to be addressed, I feel, wholeheartedly. Thank you. I just want to remind both you gentlemen that you do have two red cards you. that you could use at any point within the question pile. Mr. Fish, the next question, I'm going to start with you. What are the most pressing issues facing the town and what would you prioritize and why? There's several issues that are uh, pressing. Development, overdevelopment is a uh, a big issue. Um, we need to take a hard look, take a step back from all the development that is going on and come up with, re, reinvestigate the comprehensive plan and see if the, we could be doing things different. And uh, it, it's just too much. The infrastructure is not going to be able to handle it. The uh, the Delaware Avenue Road diet, <coughs> excuse me, is also another issue. I think we really need to take a look at that. The, uh, the traffic concerns outweigh the safety uh, concerns by a mile. There's actually going to be more accidents if they uh, go through with that plan. Uh, Mr. Van Leuven, please. I see three uh, major issue areas uh, on which I want to work, um, and it's part of the reason I ran for town board in 2015. Um, 
residential growth needs to be guided more effectively to protect the character of our neighborhoods. Um, and I think that as a town, we need to uh, implement, we need to go through our codes to make sure the town has the tool to guide growth in a manner that respects and complements the neighborhoods into which they're going. Second, we need an open space program uh, that gives large landowners options other than selling to developers. Right now, we don't have it, and relying on the kindness of strangers hasn't worked for 20 years, and it's not going to work for the next 20 years. And third, we need to tackle a very serious challenge with town uh, services. We have fantastic town services, but our town has grown, and the number of people delivering those services has decreased. And this abstract concept of town does not deliver services. People deliver services. People are out plowing your roads, paving your streets, and raking your leaves. We need to take that into serious account. And the next question, Mr. Van Leeuwen. It's very hard when you have two candidates. They're just finished thinking about one answer, and then I have to ask them again, trying to give you a little breathing space. OK. Um, did you support the sanctuary city vote, and would you do it again if elected? I did support that vote. I voted yes, and you better believe I'd do it again. Um, Gary has characterized it as gimmick legislation, and it, that could not be farther from the truth. Um, that vote was cast, and, and, and Mr. Foster characterized it as, as a symbolic vote, but that was a vote that was made because there was, there was concern among our law enforcement leadership and among the town board and the town supervisor that people were going to be afraid to call for help, either for themselves or for others, if, because they thought that they might be uh, arrested and shipped off. Um, Commander Hornick uh, pointed out that the town does not enforce um, uh, 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 citizen uh, laws. We also don't enforce tax laws, so we don't check to make sure that people have uh, not cheated on their tax codes before delivering services. We wanted everyone in town to know loud and clear that all of our town services, our police, our senior services, were there to help you regardless of what your citizenship was. And Mr. Fish, could you respond, please? Uh, I don't support the sanctuary policy. Uh, it, it, it coincided, and all it was was a uh, political theater as a statement against a duly elected president that issued a travel ban that the Ninth Circuit struck down. The Supreme Court has ruled in his favor after that. Uh, I am for legal immigration. I am for people coming here and following the law. Uh, that is... Um, that is the way I was raised, and that is the way I think it should be. It's not, it's meaningless, first of all, because there is no uh, correctional facility in our jurisdiction here. So it was nothing but political theater, plain and simple. Okay. Yes. Uh, it, it, it was public safety. It was not political theater. And it, it saddens me when important things like this are turned into political theater um, when they weren't. It's important for people in our community to know that our police are there for them, that our police are going to stand by them and help them no matter what. And there's a lot of hate speech going on at the national level, and it was creating fear in our community. And that was a concern of our police department. And that was a concern of mine. And I voted for it then, and I would vote for it now. Was it a true sanctuary city vote? No, it absolutely wasn't. One, it didn't say sanctuary city in it. And two, we don't have a jail. And so we technically couldn't even be a sanctuary city. So there's no risk of, uh, of losing federal dollars from, by, by expressing our welcoming attitude in town. Um, I, I think we need to get past these, these, these political theatrics and really look at the well-being of our community. Mr. Fisher, yes, you can use yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Touche. <laughs> um, if we don't have a correctional facility and it serves no purpose other than to make a statement, then it is meaningless. And how many citizens of this town were asked if they wanted to become a sanctuary? It was based upon a bunch of people that showed up. So whoever motivated the most people 
and made the most noise that night are the ones that won. I am against the sanctuary policy and I am for, for legal immigration, people coming here legally. There's always talk of fairness. Well, how is it fair to people that are, have been standing in line for years to become a citizen, taking the civics courses and learning the language and learning the history of our country to allow people to jump in front of them? Thank you. The next question, Mr. Fish, I'm going to start with you, please. What experience, if any, do you have in soliciting grants and awards for municipal use? I have limited personal experience. Uh, I worked for the Albany County Sheriff's Department for 24 years, and uh, we, we had numerous grants, so I'm familiar with the process, and I would explore any and all opportunities to uh, achieve any grants that are out there. Thank you. Mr. Van Leuven, please. Um, I, I haven't raised uh, grant money specifically for municipal uses, but uh, in my various roles with the Nature Conservancy, I raised, I raised millions of dollars. And I raised those through two different fronts, um, and, and both are relevant to the town. On the one front is going after grant money, and that's where you're filling out uh, grant forms and proposals and working through the grant process to try to land state and federal dollars. Um, the other is working through the political process and working the politics either at the federal level or at the state level to bring in the dollars that we need. It's working with other elected officials. Uh, Sheriff Apple uh, has brought uh, a tremendous amount of money into the town to help us upgrade our police radios. Um, we just got money to uh, improve the Clapper uh, water treatment plant and to do work on uh, the Glenmont, uh, or the, the Fura Bush 9W intersection. There's a lot of money out there. We need to be strategic in getting it, and we need to be aggressive. But we also have to be looking several years ahead because it takes a few years to get it. And the next question, Mr. Van Leuven, I'll begin with you. Um, what will you do to invigorate Bethlehem's economic development initiatives, and how will you build a stronger partnership with the business community? If you look at vibrant communities anywhere in New York, um, or really across America, the core of everyone is a vibrant commercial district. Um, you lose that vibrant commercial district and you lose the core and the vitality of a town. And, I, I've, and you drive through Sullivan County and you see dead towns everywhere. So I'm deeply committed to doing whatever we can to uh, uh, maintain and to build on the vibrancy that we have right now. The Four Corners is doing very well, um, and Elizabeth Staubach, uh, who is our economic development director, has regular calls from people who want to open businesses there. Um, we also be, need to be looking at, um, at, at large industry. We have large industry in town. We need to support that and bring in more as we can. Um, one of the tools we can use on the smaller scale is to continue to go after state micro, um, micro, grant, uh, micro enterprise grant funds, which can be used to help new businesses get going and existing businesses to expand. And Mr. Fish, could you respond, please? I would work with the local community um, business owners and see exactly what their needs are and see what we can do as a, a town board and a town uh, community to make the business climate a lot more friendly. I like the, uh, uh, the, the grants that they've been uh, passing out to small micro businesses. I think that's a good uh, and viable way to attract business. But like Mr. Van Leeuwen states, we need, we need to get larger business in here. And a prime example is out behind uh, ShopRite, where is an open field at this point. We need to get uh, large business in as well. Thank you. And the next question, Mr. Fish. How would you contain costs while maintaining services? Maintaining uh, costs and uh, I would meet with all the department heads and uh, 
get ideas about ways to contain costs and yet uh, still provide the services. I think I could garner a good uh, relationship with, with the uh, department heads to uh, foster the employees to do more with less. Mr. Van Leeuwen. Uh, right now, our town is doing more with less. Uh, in 2008, we had 241 uh, employees delivering services uh, to our residents and businesses. In 2018, we're budgeted to have 218 employees delivering services to our residents. And one of the things I think we forget, and I mentioned earlier, the town doesn't deliver services, people deliver services. Now, the town has done an exceptional job over the last several years uh, consolidating, finding efficiencies, and making our town budget extremely tight and lean. But one of the big challenges that we're going to have to work together on in the coming year, and we're going to have to talk about this as a community, is how are we going to continue to deliver these services at the levels that we've come to expect when we've grown as a town, more roads, more pipes, more people, less people to deliver those services. We're either going to have to continue investing in our town, um, and we need to do it within the tax cap, um, or we need to change our expectations. And the next question, I'm going to begin with you, uh, Mr. Van Leeuwen. Do you think that the sidewalk expansion is overdone at the expense of other priorities? Why or why not? Um, so just to, to wrap up on, on the end, you know, that, that, that's a hard truth that I was talking about, about having to look hard at the services and our expectations. And the sidewalks kind of, to some degree, falls into that category as well. Um, one of the things I think people forget is that the town is capable of doing more than one thing at a time. You know, we can fix water pipes, we can build sidewalks, we can police our streets, we can do many things simultaneously. So uh, those who are asserting that uh, the sidewalk expansion is resulting in degraded services, I think are missing the point. Also, we brought in a lot of outside money to help pay for those sidewalks. Um, uh, and We've found ways to build them more cheaply. We have our town um, uh, highway staff work on them, and then we have a consult, uh, 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 contractors come in and finish it. It's something that I think um, uh, our highway superintendent and our highway staff can continue to do well, and I think that having a walkable community is very important. Mr. Fish, could you respond, please? I think that we should uh, look at development and having the uh, developers uh, install the sidewalks as part of the process. Uh, I've heard comments from citizens, before we start building more sidewalks, why don't we maintain the ones we already have? And they were pointing towards uh, an area of Kenwood Avenue that was in disrepair uh, w with the sidewalks. Um, I think we should uh, before we start spending large amounts on things like sidewalks, maybe build some reserves so that in case something happens down the road, we have a way to cover it. Thank you. And Mr. Fish now, the next question is, hate speech is dividing our country. Is it an issue in Bethlehem? Personally, I have not heard any hate speech in Bethlehem. I, maybe I run in different circles, but the people I ha hang around with and the people I talk to do not engage in hate speech. And I'm not really sure what it is. If maybe someone could enlighten me, but I don't engage in hate speech and I don't know anyone that does. Um, like. Jim Foster said earlier, uh, I am also a proponent of the First Amendment. And w uh, offensive speech may happen. I try not to be offended by uh, speech. There's more pressing issues in life than to be offended by something somebody says. Mr. Van Leeuwen. I think that 
when, when the town board candidates answer this, there's a lot of talk about the First Amendment. And obviously, we all believe in the First Amendment. But something I often tell my kids is that just because you can say something doesn't mean you should. Just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Um, hate speech, uh, an example of hate speech that we had recently this summer was um, an anonymous poster um, who has a, a Facebook page in town put up a picture of a 15-year-old girl in her bathing suit uh, uh, right underneath the caption attacking her mother. I categorize that as irresponsible hate speech. So did Facebook. They took it down when the poster refused to do it. If we're going to say ugly things about each other, Let's do it face to face. Let's put our names, if we're going to do it, in uh, an internet forum. And let's talk to each other face to face. Um, now, the main problem I have is that it's dividing our community with lies, and it's undermining our belief in the integrity of our elected officials and of our town government and our town employees. And that's what really needs to stop. Mr. Van Leeuwen, the next question. What does the town plan on doing now that they have a conservation priority map? The conservation priority map is, an is a tool. It's a piece of information that um, the town can use uh, in the future if we have a viable open space program and need to make decisions about whether and how to expend town resources. Um, there's a lot of confusion uh, about this because there are folks that believe that it's going to result in people not being allowed to do things on their property, and that's just not the case. Um, the, the open space program that we've been talking and talking and talking about is fundamentally rooted on a respect for landowner rights. The reason that we need to create an open space fund in town is because if we want something and a, and, a, and a landowner wants to sell it, we need to pay for it. We can't just take it for free. And that's why we need a viable open space program. We need a viable open space fund. And claiming that you're gonna, we're going to do something about open space and we're not going to any, put anything into effect to help pay for it is disingenuous at best. And Mr. Fish. I am a big proponent of open space. I grew up on a horse farm. I have relatives that own large amounts of property. I am a big proponent of open space. However, I am not a proponent of the government purchasing it. First of all, it takes it off the tax rolls completely. Secondly, the land has to be maintained. Who's going to maintain it? That's going to fall on the town. I am a proponent of private sources, uh, a conservancy, or some type of donation process. It's, I, I, I can't, we can't help it if people aren't donating. Maybe they don't find it to be that great a cause. Um, but I am a proponent of open space. However, I do not feel that the government should purchase it because if two pieces of property come up for sale, and the town has the resources, how do they pick which one to buy? Who picks the winners and losers? That's not for the government. Yes, Mr. Van Leeuwen. Actually, it is for the government. That's why we elect leaders. Um, uh, if, if our situation, when we have a challenging situation, is to throw up our hands and say, well, we, we, we can't do anything, that's not leadership. The, the reality is that open space saves us as taxpayers money. Every time a development goes in, it costs us money because the amount that those new residents pay into the tax stream is less than the cost of the services to provide them. And there's been study after study after study that shows that. But the key is that we need to build an open space program that's rooted on community input, community values, and a recognition that our town is better if we have a variety of land uses rather than just allowing it to devolve into endless soulless sprawl. And this will be the last question before the closing Can statements. I, ah, I got to okay. get rid of this. Yes, so I might you, as well use it now. Use it now. There's only, we only have a few more <laughs> minutes. <laughs> okay. Like I said, open space is a priority of mine. I, I, I'm a small government person. I am against the government purchasing property. And it's not for the government to pick winners and losers. If the government can uh, purchase one tract of land and there's two available, who decides 
which tract of land is going to be purchased by the town. The government is then picking winners and losers. I, I just don't feel that that is proper. Okay. So this will be the last question. <laughs> uh, and who is, ah, Mr. Fish. You. Specifically, what is your plan to further citizen participation in planning and decision making in our town government? This is something that I've been talking, I've actually talked to my wife about this um, when I go door to door. I'm trying to get as many people involved in the process as possible. Um, some people are uh, very into and uh, open to the idea of becoming uh, a part of the process. Some people are not. I think the town needs to work uh, within whatever means it can through local media or the town's website to entice people to get involved in the process because that's the only way that you'll successfully get people in the process. And Mr. Van Leuven, please. One of the challenges that I've seen um, over the years here in town is that um, when people come and speak before the zoning board or the planning board or the town board, it's in a very structured format where there's input and then there's a break and then there's response. And something that, that, that we've started to do, we held one in Selkirk, we did one in Sunderland. I'd like to do them every two to three months around town, is to have community conversations where we on the board go into a fire department and invite and broadcast everyone in the community to come and talk. And not listen to us, but us be quiet and listen to all of you. I think that's one of the, the, the real challenges. People are, that, that I hear that are feeling that they're not being heard, they're not being heard because someone's always talking and talking and talking at them. We need to be quiet and we need to listen. Um, I, I, I participated in one of these in a neighborhood conversation in Beverwick um, last year. And um, the, uh, we got a new sidewalk because that's what they wanted, because and we listened. I would just like to say before the candidates each have their closing statements, we had a variety of questions. If I did not use yours tonight, I apologize. I tried to vary them so that a lot of different interests and concerns would have been reflected. So I apologize if someone is sitting there, because I do have a few questions that were not asked. But please understand where we're coming from. And in the closing statement, Mr. Fish, you are the first. OK, thank you. Once again, thank you for coming. I am a listener. That is how I've always been. I grew up the youngest of six children. I didn't get a chance to talk a lot, but I listened. <laughs> and that was, that's a very, very important way to learn. I learned pretty much everything I know by listening. And I cooperate with people. I, I build a consensus, and I do the best thing based upon the information at hand. And you can always count on that from me. You can count on me to have an open door. You can count on me to be transparent. I'm not afraid to admit I'm not the smartest person in the room. But I know who the smartest person is, and I'm not afraid to go talk to that person and ask them what I should do. And with that, I thank you, and I hope I can get your vote in November. Thank you. And Mr. Van Leuven, please. I, I, I love Gary's observation about the smartest person in the room, because every time I go home, I'm not the smartest person in the room. Um, Bethlehem is, let's, let's face it, Bethlehem is a wonderful town. We have safe streets, we have vibrant commercial districts, we have clean water, um, we have great neighbors. Um, we live in a wonderful town, but we live in a town in changing times, and we can't sit idly, and we can't just complain about changes that we're seeing and expect things to work out for the better. We are going to go through some really challenging times in the coming years. We're going to see development happen that we don't like. Wemple Corner scares the devil out of me. That's an area that we all love. It's going to grow houses. And why? Because we don't have any sort of open space um, program to counter it. 
Um, if we are going to have a vibrant community for the future, we need to have strong leadership that listens, that has an open door. And anyone who's reached out to me over the last 20 months has found that I have an open door. I will talk to anyone. I will email with anyone. I will have coffee at McCarroll's or Perfect Blend or Tools um, or Johnny D's. Whoever wants to meet with me, I will talk and I will listen. I think we need to pay attention to all members of our community. There's a real sense of disenfranchisement in South Bethlehem, Selkirk, and North Bethlehem. That's a problem, and it's something that I um, will work hard to correct. We also need strategic investment in our staff and in our infrastructure to ensure that we can grow successfully as a, as in the future. Um, remember, it's easy to complain, but it's hard to find solutions. But finding solutions is what Maureen Cunningham, Dan Coffey, and I do well. So I am on the Democratic, the Independents, and the Working Families lines. Can parties don't matter. Candidates do. Um, please be sure to vote on November 7th. And thank you all for coming out tonight. I'd like to thank the candidates. And thank you all for coming. Don't forget, don't forget to vote. <laughs>